that chasing the placement thing has people waiting for their money. That whole business model, chase the placement, has you waiting for the money. Where if you don't have these extra outlets like the Beat Stars or like the YouTubes to bring to the Beats, you know what I'm saying, to get, collect your traffic, like, man, you're just going to be out here on, on the island. Let's be honest, you're not gonna find these videos anywhere else. Why? Because I make them. So it would really help me out if you subscribe. If you've already subscribed, what also really helps is if you like the video and leave a comment. It's hard in the era of clickbait videos on YouTube and negativity in the producer community. And I appreciate your support, thank you so much. How has becoming a father changed your life and then you know, changed change your approach to your music career? One, it changes everything. I've been Ricky P since a teenager. So every day I woke up thinking like, Ricky P, this, 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 this. Like, let's get to it, let's do this, let's do that. Because you know, the music industry, you have to do a lot when you're first starting out, where now the day starts out, I am dad. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, I'm dad. So when I am, when I do go and use Ricky P as like, you know, my, my superhero costume, like, you know what I'm saying, my Iron Man, it's really only just to like, you know, fight crime. I'm just not like hanging out in the Iron Man suit all day. You know what I'm saying? If I could give like any type of metaphor, it's like, you know, I, I get the separation of Bruce Wayne and Batman, you know, now versus just being Batman 24 seven, you know, I get the chance to now be refreshed. And it definitely gives more of an importance to like the things I take on. You know, I used to definitely try to take on a lot of things. Now I respectfully, have to decline a lot of stuff just because if it just doesn't make any sense or like you know nonsensical sessions that i feel like doesn't lead anywhere and more just socializing i kind of refrain from you know S -s okay so how have i guess w finding a balance is is tough period whether there's you have no a such kid thing or, work, or there's, no, there's no such thing as work-life balance ever if okay there thanks was, for saying there, that there, there would be millions of books telling you how to be a balanced person and be successful because we all know with being successful in any regard any field you have to make sacrifices and uh there is no such thing as balance what you can do is find what's most important you know we often since we're t we, we believe in this stuff this is a passion we feel that everything is important like because we just love music but you'll start to find out yeah i don't need to do that session and it's nothing personal against you it's just like that time that energy i could be devoting to my son versus you it's nothing against you it's just like he needs that importance because i don't need to be ricky p to my son i need to be dad to my son you know what i'm saying so when it comes to like my music it's all it's it's is really in a sense help the, the the schedule out it didn't help it helped really filter out all the bullshit and then also uh gave me a chance to take a break i don't take a break i don't i can't tell you the last time i had an actual vacation like where i went somewhere to leisurely sit down and do nothing like nothing like nothing uh and so this is giving me the chance to take a break like, yo, uh, I slowed down on me like the amount of beats I've been making, the amount of songs. I'm still in a lot more sessions. Engine, I'm still like engineering, but like I'm not really engineering all the big, huge sessions where there's like a million people in there and stuff like that. You know, obviously we go by co like COVID guidelines, but still, it's just like uh, it it's allowed me to have more of a breath of fresh air, especially to any approach musically I could do because. I, you know, when you're working 24 seven, you don't know how to separate Bruce Wayne and Batman. You so don't. were you, were you apprehensive at first? Cause I'm thinking in terms of myself, like I'm, I'm scared to death to just take a break period. And then sometimes oh, I do yes, and, and everything's yes. fine. And you're like, shitless. okay. But shitless. you found that it was actually a positive thing. Like the world didn't stop spinning for you. Uh, like leading up to becoming a father, I was like mentally prepared until the water broke. And I, you know, movies, they lie to you. All right. They lie to you. you whenever the water breaks, it's not like rushed in the hospital. Like the baby's coming in like 10 seconds. You're <laughs> like, you're missing out. And, and then that, that moment, like I started getting mad, anxious, mad, like, yo, what do I do? Like, uh, it's a, it's a blessing. My son was born literally three minutes up the road from me. So 
I would just catch fire to myself. Like if I, I could get a break, I would just go back to the studio. But then I like, I found myself once my son got here and looking at him like, bro, I didn't even need to do all that. Like, it's okay. The world is not going to stop. Think about you. When you make a beat, you just don't make one beat. You realistically make like five or six that like it goes down like three solid beats that you made. So when you think about the grand scheme of things, there's that one day where you probably made 10 beats or whatever the fuck and you were overproductive. Where you don't have to be as productive today. But we're so programmed to think I got to make 10 beats a day. I got to make 100 beats a day. Like if I'm not making this, like I'm not going to get there. And I know a lot of kids that can make a crap ton of beats. I always house a lot of these young cats to come into the studio. And I see how many beats they can make. But like, are you gassed out? Like, are you gassed out? Nobody talks about the health factor. I'm crashed and burned. Ask Seth about that. Last year during the pandemic... I was like, yeah, all you PUA, buddy, all you PPP loan guys, I'll record all you guys for sure. Oh, you want to be rappers this year? Tight. That's awesome. You finally can pay. I don't care. I don't care. You're terrible. Fuck it. Come through. But then it's like, man, you get gassed out. Like, it's tight going after the bag, but nobody tells you to, to, you know, treat your body right like it's the temple. We sell frequencies. We don't make beats. We don't just make songs. We sell frequencies. So if you're not frequent, like if your frequency is off, then it's like, man. And we often, as creatives, make our frequency go low because we want to keep having this high output, which that doesn't even matter. What matters is the values of what you believe in and like feeling genuine love because when you become a musician, you are you chose a lonely career. And this joy that I've gotten becoming a parent now, granted, all you guys, I did this at 33. I didn't do this young, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like I have definitely lived my life, got the chance to get all that BS of like the hardships of the music industry, the ebbs and flows out. But with this, it's now, like I said, definitely eased the fact that I can take a day off and it's not going to like affect me. Now, the next day that you go back into work, you should definitely be a little bit more diligent on your time and efficient. But, dude, you can take a break. You know what I'm saying? I know right now if any big artist said they need a, a, a producer or somebody to come in and get the ra- record done, I know you could go in and do it. You know what I'm saying? It'd be different if you weren't prepared for that. You know, and we did all this preparation for this time, right, to be able to take a break, right? I got the plaques, right? I got the, the notoriety, right? Like, but this is a young man's game and everything is new every day. So like, it's hard. I, it's, it's, it's not easy. Trust me. I still battle with that. You know what I'm saying? That whole, I'm so used to just crashing out at the studio. We, I learned that with Wiz. Work until you're literally dead. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just shut off. Where now I can't do that. I can't do that. And it's not like trying to find no work-life balance. It's just the important factor. I feel. Yeah, and we're and we we you know are are, are kind of figuring out as we go, right? Like, uh, you know, this is the first time I've ever managed or helped manage someone who has a child, right? So we're 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 trying some different things this year. For instance, Ricky has a publishing deal. Like, we've reconnected with them to talk about opportunities, things like that. So we're definitely trying to, as Ricky said, just like pay more attention to um, things like you know situations that are more promising, you know. Yeah, that's on the table. It's not really like more promising. It's just like, let's, what's our opportunity cost? I could be over here just trying to be Mr. Dad and still be a stickler to Ricky P, but I'd rather, like how we've been doing, change up the approach, have a different, like, you know what I'm saying, look at it because at the end of the day, you know, I was getting into back into being full blown creative mode. Like we're creatives. I was getting to that point where you could be independent and all this stuff. You know, people be talking about own your masters, be independent, all that shit. But that's that's if you can do that. Where I feel like still like everybody should want to learn how to, you know, I'm saying do this business because it's a music business. It's just not selling art, you know. So our approach is definitely like how Seth said. It's definitely a little different, but I feel. This year, I have no need to not do something. You know what I'm saying? Like we, I have a, I have a child. So my thing is breaking ge- generational, uh, you know, patterns. And my thing is like the 
do as I say, not as I do thing. I feel like I came up in that, especially like a lot of the people you hear in the music, the, the people that they grew up with, you could tell it was like a do as I say, not as I do. All the people that they look up to are telling them not to do shit that they're doing. You know what I'm saying? Where I'm doing something right now where I'm going to be able to prove to my son, that you can always have a plan no matter what you're trying to do. You just have a plan and see it through and work hard. You're going to get there. So it's going to be a do as I say, as like, you know what I'm saying? As I do feel. So I feel like I get like a little bit of the superpower, you know? Was this set, the, the publishing deal that you mentioned, is this a new deal or yeah. you're just? No, it's the same one. Yeah. Okay, you're just approaching it differently. Or was there a moment where you kind of lapsed on on con on connecting with the publishers, or there there just seemed to be a, a lapse in opportunities? I would give the I would give the whole hundred percent truth, which happens to everybody. When you get a publishing deal, we often think that our publishers are going to enhance our workload. They're not supposed to do that. They're going to enhance your knowledge. And I went through the knowledge thing, but the people who signed me all left the different labels. If you know about labels, a lot of these label guys and A&Rs, they rotate like, you know what I'm saying, underwear. So it's like the original people that like I we had all had the, the plan, they all kind of did their own thing and they're all at different places now. And everybody that they kept trying to reconnect with me, we just weren't connecting. You know what I'm saying? Just the importance factor, you know what I'm saying, the project, they just weren't lining up. It's like you're putting me in a whole bunch of, of sessions that I can do, but that's just not my main forte. And it's like we're going to be shooting in the dark more versus, you know, working the things that work. And I feel our approach to things now isn't like, oh, it's not working. It's not a communication. It's like, hey, how can we build the communication? How can we just restart it? Like, how can we say not worried about that. Let's be present right now. Okay, cool. We got you on the phone now. What are you guys working on? You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like artists, we often get our emotions into it. Like, oh, nobody's answering, blah, blah, blah. They don't mess with us. or But it could not even be that. You know, we're just getting off of a real pandemic shutdown, which we might even go back on. So a lot of the label people, you know, weren't even in the office. Which Seth now, with the, the help of Seth, which the, I love Seth. Seth allows me to be a creative and he gets to kind of like, you know what I'm saying? It, not kind of, he does the behind the scenes. Like he's the corporate guy. He's my corporate guy. And like Seth's been kind of like, you know, really manicuring his relationships. And it's like, it's funny, small world. They all started meshing. And he knew some people that knew some of the people that I knew. And we connected the dots again. So we could sit here and be like, yeah, let's, let's go to this approach because they were energized about it. And I'm more energized about the approach of it because, you know, the importance factor. Let's, let's be honest. Like, let's get back into, is it working or are we trying to be popular? Are we trying to work or are we trying to be popular? Like, it gets to the point where it's like, are you cool with being Ricky P at your, your, your you know, what you've already done and the celebrity status of your that? Or are you just trying to really enhance the catalog of a creative? And that's what we're trying to do. Enhance the catalog, man. Like, this, this, But it's got to feel right. It's got to be right. Because I think a lot of producers, and, I, and I'm sure I was like this at some point, where I'm like, just give me a publishing deal and get me in with... You know, give me, I don't care who it is. Give me in with Taylor Swift. Give me in with whoever. I'm not saying that I couldn't add value to a Taylor Swift project, but wouldn't it make more sense to put me with currency? You know what I mean? So are you and saying it's, it's that kind of That's what exactly. That was exactly what it was. Exactly what it was. They were actually putting me in pop sessions, you know, which I can do, but is it the most efficient? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I should be with more of the urban guys. Like, you know, a lot of the younger guys that I'm with, like, you know, like the Trippy Reds, the Tory Lanes, the people who like to... I'm a really good uh, enhancer and, like, and teammate when it comes to an artist having an idea. Not just working on an album and this is like, oh, yeah, this is the name of the album. These are the type of beats I'm on. Like, no, it, like, I'm really good with getting into the concepts of things and that's where it was like, all right, Batman, uh, can we just start putting me in these things like of uh, these sessions but i also leverage having the studio you know that helps out tremendously it evens the playing field okay well if you need those urban sessions and you we can't get a lock in the studio well here just this is already just start setting these up here or whatever the case may be this start putting me more on those currency records like you know what i'm saying versus putting me on taylor swift i can knock me out a taylor swift record but is that going to be the one, one of the final ones on her album? 
that's my right. approach of it. Like, I'm not mad at them for the selection process. Let's be fucking honest. Like, let's let's put me where I like I should be, I belong. And if I'm not getting placed there, let's not be mad about the approach and let's go like how Seth does. Like, let's try to, you know, let's try to sit meet in the middle versus sitting here just being like, fuck it. Cause I feel like a lot of artists get to that point. They'll be like, man, fuck it. Man, I ain't trying to blah blah blah. But it's like, dude, it's still a business. You still can negotiate. Like a simple like Oh yeah, can we can we set the session up at seven o'clock or can we do six o'clock? That's still simple negotiation, you know. That's still meeting in the middle, right? Like it's not a crazy aspect, but if you do that approach to even to the bigger stuff, I feel that that helps out because I feel like a lot of us get a an ego into this shit, man. Like, of course we have to, you know. Right. We're in a but how many we're relationships? A, how many opportunities have you seen ruined just because someone doesn't communicate? And they, they get in their feelings before they even try to reach out and be like, hey, this is how I'm feeling about this. Can we? Oh, that was my whole 2019. Okay. <laughs> like, like, if we're going to be honest, like, that was my 2019. Oh, yeah, y'all don't want to communicate with me, oh, blah, blah, blah. You know who I am, blah, 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 whoop, whoop, whoop. It's like, but what songs are dropping, bud? You know, like, you did that before, but, like, all right, what's going on right now? That's the thing I'm, I'm, I don't like in the community. That's why, like, we even started, like, a Beat Stars. Shout out what you guys are doing. Because, like, there's nobody that's really somebody that's doing it that's, ha like, telling you how to do it. There's so many people that are going to tell you, to yo, if, you, if you're on a publishing company and they're not doing it, you should say, fuck them. It's like, no, what you should do is, like, you know take yourself and remove yourself and understand the opportunity that you're trying to do. Most of the time when you get a publishing deal, they have to teach you how to actually be a real artist in some shape or form capacity, have some type of tier of etiquette in the studio, how to run things, how to navigate stuff, you know? And that's where I didn't understand the approach where now it's like, okay, cool. Yeah, man. Uh, let's just talk about what I'm doing now versus what I did and what I, I could bring to the table. Let's not talk about the money that we're missing. Let's talk about the value that we could be creating, you know? Yeah. Like, I think, was, I think it's meant it for, for Ricky and, and, and publishing and for probably a lot of like most artists, 99% of artists that get publishing deals, it's just mitigating your, your expectations and meeting where you can meet. So if you thought that signing a publishing deal was going to change your career, path and your life a hundred percent maybe it's only 30 percent cool let's work in this capacity 30 percent of the time or take or execute any opportunities that come where we overlap and then the rest of your career continue to take into your own hands essentially you know because most people like you said paying would would kill yeah. to have a publishing deal so you know over, over the course of time and having conversations with ricky i'm like man like all these producers would kill to have a deal that you have. Let's see, you know what I mean? Let's just see where we can, let's, let's just work, you know? Cause okay. I took a smarter deal. I took a smarter deal. You know what I'm saying? I didn't take a lot of money. Mm. I really was like, I, I prefer just the same thing with Taylor gang. When I signed with Taylor gang, I did not, did not get a signing bonus, no nothing. I didn't want nothing. I needed the opportunity. I feel like if I can get in the room and I can prove myself, you'll see why you took a chance on me. And I kind of did the same thing with that where it's like, okay, cool. Give me a little player kit. Cause I was like, you know, relying on every drop. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I needed some type of buffer to work and not be like, I'm waiting. Cause if you know the music industry, all these sessions that you're doing, you're not going to get paid until eight to 12 months later. Just get it out your mind. Cause you're going to get paid fast. Seth, he, he knows all well about billing. Shout out Seth and his upgrade. I don't know if he told you, you know what I'm saying? Universal music group, Seth. Okay. And doing billing over there and you're yes universal music group Seth. yes yes go let's go but you'll see that like that they don't pay you out and so it's like that i got the buffer and they set me up the situation i was still just like how seth said my expectations and what was really going to go on were like it just weren't meshing and i i had to understand and take a step like a step back and relearn doesn't matter who the fuck you are bro there's always something you can learn and that's where i had like my 2019 i had to have that rude awakening and you know that's when we started the studio and so now it's like all right bet man i understand you have to create value even if you do get a publishing deal it doesn't mean you're adding value to them they already got a machine going 
You know what I'm saying? They they need you to add value. They don't care about money. It's a multi-trillion dollar corporation. You know what I'm saying? They're making money right now as they're not paying you. You know? Uh, so it's, it's, it's been a, a beautiful ride. And I have to say, if you are a young creative, please, if you cannot do it, please find yourself somebody who can help you navigate. My life has gotten tremendously easier when I focus more on what I can do and not what trying to do all this stuff. And Seth is a, a huge role. It's hard to find people like Seth that are, was a creative and still creates, but still can do the, the corporate stuff because you will lose out on a lot of your, lot of your opportunities, 75% of your opportunities, if you don't know how to mesh and, you know what I'm saying, meet the corporate demand because it's an independent game now, but that's for the people who really built their foundation. And if we're talking about the, the beat maker producer community, because, you know, we've been lied to. You're not a producer until you really know how to get the artist on the song, you know, and really formulate a song. Like you're not a producer until you did that. And you're not a, a hit maker until it was actually registered a hit. OK, not just by you saying this is a hit, like does the numbers and like, you know, the hardware, uh, you know, match up. So if you are a young producer, find you a set. Please find you a set. Find you right, a set. Let's talk about Seth then. Seth, what, what happened with um well congratulations, it sounds great. I just don't know the specifics. What what is your role at Universal Music Group? Thank you. Yeah, I'm just uh I'm uh got brought on as a coordinator in the consumer marketing department. Okay, got it. What does that entail? Uh, so basically I'm handling, uh, like finances, uh, for executing like ad campaigns for all, all of our artists. It's like, a what they did was they created like an in-house media agency, uh, at universal. So our clients are actually like the subsidiaries of universal. So like capital Republic for things like that. And, uh, so we're executing marketing campaigns on behalf of like all the subsidiaries of UMG. And it's digital marketing. Most. Uh yes. Yeah. Okay. And that's a landscape that you have a lot of experience in then having managed artists and been an artist yourself. Yeah, I mean, for sure. A hundred percent. And also, you know, I, I was doing uh some of this work in, in the film industry before. Um and then yeah, it was kind of like all the work that I've been doing in music combined with uh some experience that I had like in, in the corporate world and film. Um and yeah, I just, uh, 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 a recruiter approached me on LinkedIn and, uh, I was applying for like a ton of A&R jobs over the course of the last like year and a half. And, you know, they kept taking like interns or whoever, it was just already like easily integrated in integratable into their system. Uh, so it was just kind of the foot in that I needed, um, to get in. So. Seth, you're probably going to plead the fifth on this, but. Uh, you tweeted about a sync plug. Have you been getting syncs for your artists a lot lately? Um, it's it's a so. Th this is the first one that's come around in um, this opportunity is the first one that's come around in in around like six months or something like that. And it's and it's with like the same person that that I was dealing with in the past. It's just you know, like the budgets weren't always crazy in the past. And he was like, well, just rock out with me and, you know, we'll, we'll you know, let's grow together. And th this is a good friend of mine that has like a, um, a media company. And, uh, and so, yeah, he, he brought us on to this project. He, he basically just had me source the music, uh, for this project. And they ended up making all of the creative decisions, but I, uh, I got like, you know, uh, my guys involved and, uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty substantial situation. We didn't have to give up any ownership and, um, Love. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <a> good situation. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what people I think maybe don't know about syncs and why they're so amazing. Generally you don't have to give, I mean, if it's a sync license rather than like an all in buyout kind of thing for like a car commercial or, or one of those bigger situations, you really don't have to give up much. It's like free money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And you get picked up every time. Every time they pick up that license, they'll pay you. 
Yeah, and so it's uh, not like chasing an album. You're, you're. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you actually get paid on time and things like that. It's That's the thing. The yeah, they do. They, they rush you through it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And I don't want to jinx any of this, by the way, because like they they sent me like the paperwork through and stuff, and it's supposed that the campaign is supposed to go live in January second, but like it's still in the middle of. You know, I I don't feel super comfortable talking about everything yet, but. Um, it would be very good if everything goes smoothly. Yeah. Well, let's let's make it general. Then, what advice can you give, especially the producers out there who want to get their their beats or their songs licensed for TV, film, and commercials? Um, well, for me, it happened very naturally, and I, I mean, I would start um, contacting. I would just start. You know, everything starts with networking, right? So, so like everyone is so focused on music and who's involved in music and the music business and what bars to go to and who hangs out where. And it's like, I, you know, if this goes the, the way that it will, I'll have made, you know, the most significant amount of money uh, that I've ever made from, you know, someone that has his own media company. You know what I mean? That it doesn't have to do with music. You know, he's just shooting digital content for companies like Adidas and Reebok. And, you know, he's just a friend of mine that I met in Israel and, and, uh, you know, grow, grow with the people around you, not just people in music, because the plugs are going to come from everywhere. You know what I mean? Like, it's just to let people know what you're working on and, uh, and and keep it's everyone's job just to keep elevating within their own lane. And eventually, you know, everyone's going to be able to help one another out. So that, that was my experience. It's just it's just networking. It, it really is like human to human contact and relationships. Cause that dude, cause he could have asked literally anybody, you know what I mean? But he asked me. And uh, the key thing though, not where you're hanging out, you build a net that that's actual networking. Like you're communicating with people, you're building a, a value to the table, not just going and hanging out and having some drinks with these people and being at the social spot and looking cool. You were right. actually talking with these people like you said a year and a half of submissions and just constant like hey i'm still around i'm still doing it i'm still yeah. you know what i'm saying if you need somebody i'm very like you know what i'm saying i can add value and what happened they came and got came to you yeah thanks and we executed too that's the thing you know like well, on, on the smaller projects like we we provided value before there was a ton of value received you know what i mean so it's just kind of you have to like in any industry you have to pay your dues, um, and we did that uh, in in that situation, and and now it's led to you know like by executing on this project, fingers crossed, you know these are these are now corporate and commercial clients like Wendy's and Dick Sporting Goods and things like that that you know like mm. people like us might never even see like but you know there's major money being made and there's big yeah, money. huge markets of people that they're using that like your production on and that's hearing it and you're getting paid for it like yeah. you know nowadays you can get a song when an album dropped and like and the song's out and you're still not paid for it like that yeah yeah that. Facts. Facts. but that sync placement what you're talking about that shit man true yeah how do we get the labels to catch up to the media companies and actually start paying within a reasonable amount of time or like every, i would say probably Half the time I get a major placement, I have to harass the label just to send my advance and that then the project's been out. And that feels like that's a common experience for beat makers and producers. Because most beat makers and producers, we didn't go to school and we don't have funds to have a legal team to spread you out. Like, you know what I'm saying? And hit you with a whole bunch of jargon that you don't know. What we know how to do is create a, uh, like, you know, a frequency that everybody likes and I feel like the labels have figured out that they're a bank with the, that they could get you with a higher interest rate. You know what I'm saying? Because they're liable to give it to you. Like, shout out people like Russ who just told people like the old trick in the book. Like, you know, what I be telling them motherfuckers. Like, if you think you deserve a, a deal, go to a bank and ask them to give you that money that you think a label should be giving you. If they say no, then you're not going to get it from this label because if they give it to you, they're going to hit you with that interest rate. They're going to want all the money back because they know – Essentially, you need them to become corporate unless you go do all the legwork, you know. Um, if yeah, and then if you're doing all the legwork, you might not even want to sign with them. Yeah, exactly. I, mean, I, think, like, I think, unfortunately, right now, um, 
there's not there's not th that fight is going to be a long fight and and i think the best advice uh since this is what this show is, is for right is just like being constructed for the producer community i think the best advice is to not like it's not a viable business model to want to just chase placements right so ricky has a studio for instance you know what i mean like like uh you're selling beats on beat stars like find your identity within the music business execute on that and have whatever placements you get be as a, a, a as a result of that right you know so ricky has access to tons of artists that he has genuine relationships now with either because of what he, everything that he's done as a producer over the years or the fact that he has a fucking tier one studio in los angeles now you know what i mean um so you know i, I feel like a lot of the guys that are most successful right now are, are using youtube as a funnel to beat stars and then they're getting placements through that because first of all like big artists are searching for their, themselves on youtube for tight beats so if you have good like seo or whatever it's called it's like they're gonna see you secondly if you know if you're a composer or an instrumentalist like make samples use that to an advantage because everyone wants melodies um and if your strength yeah just f find your identity within within the business and and create a business and get the placements as a product of that because then you're bringing in right when you sell a beat on beat stars you're not waiting for that money so you're creating like a positive stream of income while having a chance to be engaged with the music industry in kind of this like romanticized way that everyone wants to be which is getting major placements all the time right yeah like you said death to the business model of chasing placements the holiday season pass and people are really waiting on this money like they need this money so it's like we that chasing the placement thing has people waiting for their money that whole business model chase the placement has you waiting for the money where if you don't have these extra outlets like the beat stars or like the YouTubes to bring to the beat, beat stars that have the SEOs, like the, the, you know what I'm saying? To get, collect your traffic. Like, man, you're just going to be out here on, on the Island because I was on the Island. I for sure got lied to, you know what I'm saying? When I got my publishing deal and then you start seeing like a year or two down the road when things kind of get a little slow, they don't, they don't tell you about all that. Like you, you have to add value to all this stuff. It's not just, Oh yeah, you get into the, to the matrix and then you're good. Like, no man, like it's a, a wild. And if we're all giving advice, woo. Find you a hustle, man. Find a vessel in this. Engineering is my vessel. I can still get paid off of sessions. I can still live. And I can still be around the creativeness. Like, I might not be making all the beats for the songs, but I'm sure as hell in the creative process with these artists and the comfortability. So whenever they do want to hear my beats, they call me. You know what I'm saying? Like, fuck. Like, I know I'm not Mr. Like oh yeah, I'm on everybody's album, but I'm sure as hell working with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Especially on the engineer tip, but that allows me to get in these random big, huge placements. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The other thing that I want to point out is that Ricky, you know, one of the, Ricky came up in like a, you know, a few, like the, the structure is changing fast, right? So when Ricky came up, one of the most powerful things you could do is work with one artist and help break an artist. And Ricky did that with Wiz, you know what I mean? Like he, I don't know, Ricky, if you'll claim solely responsible for Wiz on trap records, but like was a pioneer in it for sure, you know? So I definitely will give all credit to Wiz because that man is a phenomenal artist. Like he is, he's still, nobody can work on that workload I've ever seen, like what he's done besides like obviously like the Drakes or something, but still like Wiz is on that same tier, if not like, you know what I'm saying? But I, I I definitely believe I was an intricate part in the team creating process. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like what a real producer is. You are a team player. And like when you want to talk about auto-tune and like how you said on trap beats and just stuff like that and just like experimenting, I will definitely say I was a I love my role and I still continue to love my role in being a team player and helping an artist have that comfortability to try something new. You know it's hard, man, to try something new. If you try to make a different type style beat that you don't make, you know you could do it, but you don't do it in front of everybody. Nope. You might not even do it. You might fuck around and psych yourself out and just go back to what you know and start putting you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so you do need that person in the room be like, no, 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 bro, keep going, keep going, keep going. 
Keep going. No, yeah, no, I, no, I, I wanted to actually wanted to ask you about that because you you recently made your this month you made your first drill beat, right? Yes. I haven't stopped making them. I fire, never did yeah. it. I never did it because I'm a producer who understands how producing is. You need a whole bunch of other creatives to make that shit. And it's like, fuck it. If I know somebody who knows how to make it, I'll just go to the homie. Let's get the placement. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's get the song done. Are we worried about getting the result? And if you don't know that person, but I know you have what they want here. I know you'll look out in a little, like, you know what I'm saying? I'll get my little pub on it and like, we'll keep it moving. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's what it's supposed to be about. But I never tried it. And the homie was in the studio. Shout out Fed the God. He was out here rolling out weekend. And uh, they were like, he's talking about drill beats. And I'm very into the, the study of music. And um, I started showing them like the new thing with drill beats. They've been like sampling like hits. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the one they did, like the thrill of it. Like they just did uh, Be Love, did like so a Wayne Wonder joint. Like they put like some like drill drums on like Wayne Wonder like flip. You're like, oh, what the hell? But it sounds hard. So I put him on that. And he, he loaded up a YouTube beat. And uh, that producer is a notable guy that be on all this shit. So I was like, man, fuck it. I'm going to try it. And I, it, it was successful. So then I just started like working on like, and then me and Fed did a record, and then I just started putting my take on it because ultimately, I'm not a drill producer, but I like to, I like to try shit. You know, Seth knows this. So I'll I'll make any type of music. Like I listen to everything. And I tried it, and like I just been putting my own take on it, and it's like it's refreshing. Like it's actually created like a, a spark. I stopped making like beats for real, for real. And then like I made my first, my first drill beat. And then I literally haven't stopped making them. And it's refreshing. Like it's refreshing to try shit. I feel like everybody's too safe. Like it's just too safe. And everybody, like they'll listen to somebody's like album and then they'll just make that producer's shit. Like they're not even hitting the producer up, trying to collab with them. Like, no, they won't even make their own take to it. They'll just make that exact thing. Like, once people heard Trippy on hyper pop beats, they, everybody was making like that type of beat versus like their own, mm. like, try to it, you know? Because, like, I for real, for real, with my drill beats, I use a house method to like kind of like a four to the floor, but I'm using like more like a, a three to the floor. Instead of like that fourth one, I'll leave it open. Then I might do that little, like, you know what I'm saying, bass slide type situation. But that's the thing I like about, um, drill beats because for real for real it's just like 20 bpms faster than house beats like you know what i'm saying like uk house like you know i don't know if you know about like you know what i'm saying like they're kind of like house shit's a little different you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying kind of like party house and that's what i've kind of been like adding to it but man shout out to that to the drill beats i i'm actually having fun with those so i want to i want to talk about a pro this is just this is sad um drago the ruler rest in peace um I didn't realize you were working so closely with him and you you mixed the majority of his project. Yeah, his last uh, project, uh, Long Live the Ruler. Um, when he came home uh, from prison, the first day he came straight to our studio. Uh, shout out Desto Dub. Uh, he plugged that in there uh, and we built a rapport because he was a workaholic like he came home and was just like in the studio every day literally 10 to 12 hours no no puffery on it and uh he never asked for a discount like, you ever see somebody in the studio so long you're like damn bro i gotta look out for you like you're here every yeah. day like and you're actually like pumping out projects like you're dropping like each of your project has anywhere from like 18 to 25 songs on it like holy shit yeah, because the last one had, what, 21, I think? It, no, it had 28. 28, 28. No, no, 29. I did 20. I mixed 20. I mixed 21. Oh, of you them, mixed like, 21 to 29. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, I mixed 21 to 29. And then the last ones, he couldn't get, like, sessions for, like, the features. So, you know, I had to kind of, like, just kind of run some, like, mastering kind of, like, shits through him just so that I could kind of, like, you know, volume-wise go across the board, like, similar, but... 21 of them i was actually like you know what i'm saying messing around with them uh i would say about 16 of them he did here with me so they're like they it really wasn't like anything like that much uh shout out priya uh and shout out uh garrett hunter 
they were like whenever he first came home they were really like working with him and those are some of like the young homies that i like like their engineer I, I see they have bright futures and they were working heavily with him but then uh he laughed because he didn't realize my diamond plaque he kept walking past because like at the studio i'm not mr you know what i'm saying i'm not mr showboat like we're all here to be creatives. Matter of fact, I'm probably going to walk past you in a hoodie. You probably won't even think I'm like, you know what I'm saying, anybody. Everybody just thinks I'm like security or something like that. Like, who's this old Are man? You the studio manager? <laughs> yeah, like, I'm just the studio <laughs> manager. They don't think, like, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we started getting, like, building a bond. And he was like, damn, no wonder you really don't care. Like, you don't be all up in people's faces and shit like that. I'm like, yeah, because if we're going to talk the math, if you want to get on the sticks, oh, yeah. We're going to, like, I... I don't need to talk shit. Like, it's going to go. But I'm not in that. I'm not into, like, you know what I'm saying? That, that and we just built a, a crazy relationship off of that. And also, me becoming a dad, bro, he would always be around his son. He'd even have his son in the studio and shit with him. And, like, when you see a guy that's, like, really diligent and still, like, a father figure and all that stuff, and you hear all this negativity about somebody because, unfortunately, you're part of the system. You know, the stuff that everybody like to listen to, you're part of that. So it's like whenever, like, and you get to pick real life and then real life happens to you. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like a sad thing. But me and him, we became like really good, close, like working uh, people because he's a, a, he did everything himself. When you talk about true independent artists, that was a true independent artist. He still uploaded his own music. Oh, wow. No, like he still uploaded his own music. Like his own, well, like his homie, uh, one of his main uh, producer, Jug Season. He uh, like helped him. Like, we'll sit there and like you know what I'm saying get all the files, but he uploads everything. Like he was hands on with everything wow. that he did. I respected everything that that man did in his business model. He did everything. What we want to talk about? Oh, I own my own masters, and it made sense. That was it. Like that's like the tier. What you you want to look at like an independent artist? Look at his business model. He is the top tier when it comes to handling your own business, knowing everything. You know what I'm saying? Knowing everywhere, like because he handled all his business. To, like there's a lot of labels was hitting him up. A lot of people wanted like you know what I'm saying. He just had like I think this last project I think Empire or one of his projects Empire helped out with like on a distro, but it was like solely just like only on just like drop and shit. But he literally didn't have no label push like that man i had wow. all respect for that man when it comes to just how you do things and then when it came to rapping he knew how to rap and in the booth go in there 10 minutes 15 minutes knock out a whole song he wrote 12 16s like you know what i'm saying he had a weird formula where his hooks were like he did an eight bar hook and then like a pre-hook so it was kind of like a 12 bar like hook and then he did like twelves and shit like that. And like that man was in there rapping, like rapping, rapping. Uh, uh, like I said, long live the ruler, man. Uh, sad situation. Um, it hit home, and uh, it it goes back to the formula: building with an artist. Are people willing to build with an artist? Are you willing to build with an artist? Like I didn't like treat that that project mixing wise like how I treat everybody else's and stuff like that. Like me and him got into a business model where he never asked for discounts. I started giving him like, I, all right, bet if we're doing all this stuff, you don't need to be paying me all like that. Like, if you're coming recording with me, I don't need to charge you like all crazy to mix your song. Like what? I already did all the hard part that like I have to correct in mixing somebody's song. You know what I'm saying? So it's really like, all right, bet let's go. Like fuck all that other shit. Let's just work. Because the opportunity cost is way better than just me sitting there trying to be a business model like, yo, let's get some money. Like, no, let's build. Like, because then you'll really see an artist blossom. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, that's all that, that what me and his relationship was, was the same format what I did with Wiz. Like, you know what I'm saying? Being a team player to somebody's situation. He had all his own producers and shit like that. I didn't come in there and be like, I'm Ricky P. I need to do all your shit. No, it was like, yo, can you help me out with this stuff? Like, I like, you know what I'm saying? You're already helping me out. Like, can you help me out some more? And it's like, hell yes. Like, that's whether a whether, uh, beat maker, producer, an engineer, whatever the hell you are, if you're not an artist, that's what you should be doing. Even if you are an artist and somebody else, your homie is the it factor, you should be over there helping them out. Like, you know what I'm saying? And that's when you see real genuine music that's when you see music that like you know what i'm saying captivates people it's just not somebody in there rapping it's it's 
It's the, it's all I can say is death to the business model of chasing placements, brother. Death to the business model of chasing placements. Yeah. If you if you stop doing that, you'll grow with artists and you'll see yourself always with the, the next one. You know, yeah, that, that was what, what, what I was going to say, regardless of what lane you choose, whether you're a sample maker, or you're creating drum packs or you're like a beat stars, YouTube guy, whatever it is, like bet on somebody and build with them. You know what I mean? I think that that's that's always uh, it happens. Look at yeah. Dr. Dre. You know what I'm saying? Like, took a chance on Eminem. Like, Eminem took a chance on 50 Cent. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like as you, you look at Eminem's uh, producer list, <laughs> that nigga produced some hits, all right? The, the, like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, we're talking about producers taking a chance on an artist. You know what I'm saying? Zaytoven, Gucci Man, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the list goes on to people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Metro, Thug, like, you know, the list goes on. If you take a chance on an artist... You'll really flourish. You'll be you'll be valued. And Ricky and Wiz, my boy. <laughs>